inshallah. inshallah. And maybe those of you who know each other, or you call each other, remind each other before you go to bed, let's do that. Just clear the hearts, you know? Because Allah Azza wa says, you know, in the Quran, uh, or, or in part, in ver various parts, Allah will say, Wa'fu wasfahu. Wa'fu, when you pardon, is when you, you pardon somebody, you don't retaliate, and you leave them, okay? So somebody said some bad things about you, you pardon them. <coughs> Now, but Allah Azza says wasfahu, because saf is deeper than than pardoning. Because you might pardon someone, but you still have issues in your heart. I'll give you a, a reenactment. It looks something like this. So uh, let's let's pick on sisters. A sister is sitting down and laughing and having fun with some other sisters. Then a sister, that offended her in the past, walks in. All right. The sister did some things against her. And she forgave her. Wait for when we get settled. So the sister did something against her in the past. Said some really bad things about her. They were untrue. The sister forgave her, right? Or the brother forgave the other person. So you're sitting with your friends. You're laughing. And then when you turn, you see that person enter the room. Immediately the smile disappeared, you know, and your mood changed. Even though you forgave them, you never retaliated. So you did afu, good, good job. But you didn't do safa. And safa is when you really turn the other side. And it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. And when you can do that, and there's even a higher level than that, is when you pardon, and then you turn the other side. You totally forget, you turn away from it. No hard feelings, no cold salams. Because, uh, you know, I forgave you, but I remember what you did to me. <laughs> no, none of that. And then the highest level is then, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsin. To do something good to that person. Now, can you imagine now, someone offends you, and do this for fun next time. Someone does something bad against you. You forgive them, and then you're always nice to them. Still, kifat had and you smile and everything. And then you bring them some gift. Oh, they will be so ashamed that they ever said something about you or created problems for you or lied about you. They'll be, every time they see you, they'll feel ashamed. You might take another path because I'm so ashamed of this guy. He's so nice to me and look at the, the things that I did to them. And they know and they forgave me. You know, that's, that's part of the... So, uh, so we're saying then, akhlaq, very, very important. It's not just something that you add on afterwards. It's essential, it will destroy your good deeds if you have bad akhlaq. And if you have good akhlaq, it could cover up because of, of its weight. It could cover up for some of the sins. And uh, that it's the you know, heaviest thing on your scale on the Day of Judgment. It's one of the things that most lead people to paradise. It's one of the bad akhlaq, one of the things that most lead people into the hellfire. So now comes an important question. Are you born with good akhlaq? Or can you acquire good akhlaq? Who thinks you're born with good akhlaq? Put your hands up. Okay, that's great. Excellent. Because if, if you are just born with good akhlaq, then why would Allah punish you for a way He created you? So He created you with bad akhlaq and you can't improve your akhlaq. Then why would He punish you for that? True? True. But that means, and of course the answer is, the answer is actually, what is the answer? You can acquire it, and there's part of it that's inherited as well, right? You've seen a guy with a calm father, and he's very calm also. No, yeah, I've seen people like that. You've seen, you know, someone who never ever loses his cool. Then you visit him at home, and his father never ever loses his cool. Ah, that's where he got that from. So they tell you part of it is, uh, is like that, like kind of inherited, and the other part is you, you can acquire, it. you can improve your akhlaq, and that's the good news. Now, you know, we live uh, in a society where this uh, exaggerated sense of individuality. Exaggerate, I say, because sometimes you want to advise a Muslim brother and tell him that, or, or your sister, and you say, look, this issue, and, and you bring it in a nice way and everything, but then they just write it off as, well, this is who I am. So many times you try to give people advice about their akhlaq, and they tell you, well, I understand that, but that's who I am. I mean, that's who you are. You don't want to improve at all? You just doomed to be bad man or da'ani? You can't improve whatsoever? You want to put some effort? So th that's who I am. Or this other thing where we believe in this weird duality where 
like one person was telling me, you know, we could be in a board meeting and I will say the rudest and harshest things to you, but then we want, we'll go out after the meeting and we're friends again, we'll go get kebab. <laughs> Who tells you I want to eat kebab with you after you have bad manners like this? I don't want to have kebab with you. I don't want to have biryani with you. <laughs> so, who said that there are different ways to behave for a Muslim? That, you know, if it's business, business is business. You know, I'm, I'm cutthroat, I'm rude, I'm, I'm blunt to the point, crude and harsh. That's business. But then when we're at the restaurant, I'm very sweet and gentle. You know what? I'll tell you about this one guy that I knew. I used to be so embarrassed when I would meet this guy because he's so nice to me. He's only two years younger than me. You know, and yet he respects me so much. We were just friends, but he would say, "No, no, no, you don't get up. You're older than me." And he would run and get it and come back. And then he says, "I need to leave now. I, you know, just ask your permission. Do you need anything from me before I leave?" So yeah, just go. You know, it's okay. <laughs> Such manners from this guy, Allah. Excellent manners. That that you are the older one. Let me do it. Do you need anything? Command me and I shall do it. <laughs> Allah used to say that. Command me. Allah, till I traveled with that guy. <laughs> Wallahi, I couldn't believe it. Wallahi, I couldn't believe it. That it was the same guy. I had to check somehow. Is this that guy? He was doing reckless driving. I mean, he would just slam on the brakes. Then he would slam on the gas. Then he would... He was, he was proficient in sign language, apparently. He was giving signs left and right, outside the car, inside the car. And he was smashing the horn and, and hitting the brakes and hitting the gas. And, and I was just looking at him like, this is the same guy who was like, command me and I shall do it. <laughs> so, it can't be like that, yani, that your akhlaq is just, <coughs> here I can have good akhlaq in business, in driving it's different. I know one brother, whenever he's driving, he takes off his kufu. <laughs> he want to give a bad image to Islam. Because <laughs> he knows people, <laughs> you know. So the minute he's in the car, he takes it off. This is some other him. And then when he puts it on, this is a low you, know? you see this a lot with, with basketball. And I, and I would love that you know, our good akhlaq become a part of who we are. Not part of who we are in the masjid. You know, it's, it's strange when, you, when I see brothers play basketball. <coughs> And you know, suddenly they start saying things and phrases and and strutting and, and doing very strange things like that. The same same group that was inside the masjid a few minutes ago. You know, I don't want to reenact what they do, yani, but re really strange akhlaq. Anyways, by the way, is uh, sports good for akhlaq or bad for akhlaq? <coughs> no, depends. 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 Okay. All right, but if anyone sees the khalaq, uh, sports that improve your akhlaq, please let me know, okay? <laughs> yeah, we're talking about that we, we want to improve our akhlaq. The good news is we can improve our akhlaq. And the ways we do it, for one, there's no, there's no me in the masjid and then me in business meetings, and there's one. Two, we want to be realistic with ourselves and we want to evaluate ourselves. And we also want to accept when someone gives us a piece of advice. You know. And we want to act on it. I'll, I'll tell you another true story. We were, uh, this, this guy, and I didn't really know him very well. So he's giving me a ride to my car. And he's telling me you know, on the way, give me advice. I said, okay, well, I don't know the guy that well. I couldn't think of anything. So I said, okay, well, I, I can't think of anything. But inshallah, if I see anything wrong, he says, I love people to give me advice. And I like to improve myself. So if you see something wrong with me, give me some advice. So I can improve my eyes. I said, okay, inshallah, if I see something, I'll let you know. One minute later, he said, huh, did you think of anything? <laughs> I said, no. But if I think of something, I promise I'll let you know. Two minutes later, he said, tell me something. Tell me just anything. Just give me some advice. I said, yeah, I didn't want to tell him. I don't really know you that well, I mean, to give you some advice. But then I remembered something. He, this, this problem that he has, he interrupts people a lot. So I told him, you know, actually, I, did, I do remember something. I interrupt people a lot. He said, yeah, yes, yes, I know that. Give me some new advice. 